if you want to see how good you can become, you should write this stuff down. You should look at it off very often. If you want to become mentally strong, all right, you got to have the ability to forget. And it's the hardest thing to do. Because when you double fault or you hit a ball in the net or you hit it long, all right, you're going to have a feeling. You're going to have an emotion. And it's going to go right through your body. And it's probably not going to be a good one. But how you respond to that feeling is what I call the X factor. You got to slow it down in your mind. But if someone went ace, 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 I don't think you're going to say, all right, I got him now. I got him now. I don't think any of you are going to be thinking like that. Because what happened was you just got ace three times in a row. So you're going to respect it more. You're going to fear it more. You're going to be more indecisive. You're going to be more tentative. And that's the worst thing that you can do. What does those three aces have to do with the next point? Nothing. Nothing. If you can frame it like that, if you can just tee it up just like that, that's what greatness does. And that's the difference between someone who's good and great. They have the ability to forget. They can focus on the present. And it's been my experience. You know, people ask me all the time, what's the similarities? Capriati, Roddick, Venus, Serena, okay? Mary Pierce, a lot of these players that Sharapova, that I coached when they were young, the only thing they had in common, they just all love to compete. They just love the battle. And if you can do that, you're going to handle pressure. So if you look at it, it's pretty common sense. And if you're out here saying, I'm slow, what happened? You just got slower. That's the one thing and only thing you have control over is your attitude. All right, next thing. Show of hands, how many of you guys like to run? If you don't like to run, no matter what age, what I would recommend, I think you should retire at 8, 9, 10, 11. This is the wrong sport. I'd retire at a young age, take up bowling, golf, swimming, do something where you don't have to run. So that's the keys to the car. This is a running sport. This is a change of direction sport. Next thing, how many of you, when you play, get tired? Okay, well, that's another thing. And you got control over that. That's unacceptable. If you want to see how good you can be, okay, you got to get your butt in shape. You got to jump up more rope. You got to do more agility drills. You got to get fitter. There's no, once you get tired, you're not going to run. You're not going to bend. You're going to get impatient. You're going to do things that you normally wouldn't do. So that's just unacceptable, especially at this age, to get tired. I, what is that? Tired? I don't even know what that means at, the, at your guy's age. It's unacceptable. I bet you anything, if you were really, really tired and you couldn't go anymore, okay, and your mom said, hang in there, I'll get you an iPhone, you guys would be all over the court like a little jackrabbit. I'm telling you, you'd have a second, third, and fourth win. You'd be all over the court just flying. If you got to do it for other reasons, it ain't going to work. The out balls. I told you guys this many times and I'm still seeing it. If the ball goes out, get it. You got to get the ball. I don't care if it's one inch out, one foot out, 10 feet out. Here at this place, the fences are out. Now, if you run for every ball, here's what's going to happen. The in balls are going to become a lot easier. You're going to build confidence. And when you build confidence, that's what this is all about. It helps your determination. It helps your fighting spirit. It helps your persistence. More importantly, you're practicing strokes from way outside the court, and you're going to be there as you get older. Back in the mid-90s or late 90s, whatever, Venus Williams was playing Sperlea at the US Open when they had that famous bump incident. It was six all in the tiebreaker. Sperlea hits a backhand angle. Venus is about where Alana is off the court, running all the way over there in the tiebreaker, six all in the third, hits his backhand cross-court angle from way over there. The crowd goes crazy. The next point, the girl serves. She's freaked out. She double faults. The match is over. They interview Venus. After the match, they said, that was an amazing shot. How did you hit that ball eight feet off the court and make that shot? She goes, uh, well, ever since I was little, I've always trained to hit the out balls. I always played the out balls. Came right from the heart. It was no big deal to be in that position. She didn't freak out. She was comfortable because she's been there. 
And a lot of this stuff is right here, your attitude. Some of you go, well, wait a minute, I have the best attitude when I'm winning 6050. I know you do then. I want you to do it when it's the other way. You know, because that you got control over that. Don't make it easy for the person. You still have control over that, and your head's going to get stronger. But you can't do it Monday, Wednesday, Friday. It's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Even on your day off, if you take Sunday off, you got to do it on that day too. You got to train yourself, and you'll become that. If I say check, you go back the same way. Okay? Good. Recover. Gabriella Price is the closest thing I've ever seen to a Jennifer Capriati at this age. But Gabriella is even a little further along athletically. Pull the left in. Rick is really like nice to me and he always helps me with things. Well, I've been coaching tennis, you know, 30, 35 years. And a lot of kids that I've had since a young age have went on to become household names. Jennifer Capriati, Venus and Serena Williams, Andy Roddick. When I'm playing with people, he tells me what to do and stuff when I'm playing matches on his court. 